Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Lists. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a list using the List app. So first of all, I've activated Microsoft Lists from the app selector. So it's down here, look, clicked on it, and then this is a screen showing me the list that I've already created. Now to create a new list, you just go in at the top there where it says New List. And then you've got options so template options these are all preset lists with the columns already set out for you you can just enter the data straight away and you can see there's quite a lot of preset ones there already at the top you've got blank from an existing one so you're just editing that really from an excel file or a csv file and then ones that have been populated by your organization which i haven't got any for this tutorial i'm going to use the blank list option so I'm clicking on that and then it needs a name so I want this to be called course attended so I want a list of courses that people attend in my um, organization course attended courses by people that's what I want to you know, you pick a color for your list I'll pick blue because I like blue you can also click an icon and whatever you want there cup of tea let's go for that one you don't need to do that if you don't want click create saving it to my lists and then it will create that and you will have to create your own column headings now so at the top here you've got a title it's already there you've got add column so it's up to you what you put in there now so this is going to be a, a set of columns that i'm going to select so first column I'm going to select a text column, go next, and then this will populate. And then I want um, just this to be called name, and then description, first and second name, for example. And let's think of a line of text, default value none, save. So that column is then added over here. Add another column, you've got a choice column. I want to know which courses they did so go next this will be called course um, which course did you attend Oops. did you attend for example and then these are your choices so you've got different options here I'll just leave it as it is it's on this one choices one so choice one I'll go for Excel two word three access so i'm not going to do any more than that but obviously if you've got the whole office suite there you're going to have to add extra ones can any value can add values manually no default choice none no calculated value that's okay save that one so that's going to give me a course it gives me options to sort at the top there when i add some data there so now i want to know when they did it so i'm going to select date and time next i just want this to be called date of course and then everything else can stay the same happy with that save so it's just a case of building up your columns and if i just click into this list i'm not going to do any more for this example you've got other options there preset courses and then you've got a link to all other course types so you've got all of this information that you can create you can add them in there once you've added a column, you can resize that column. And I don't need to make it that big, but you can resize that column. You can actually pick a column up and move it. If you wanted to put the date first, you can move it. And that sets that up. So now what you've got is a mechanism to enter the data. So edit in grid view, and then you get these boxes coming up. So I'm just going to add a few people in there. And then you can see how this works. So you just basically type your information, tab across. This has got a date picker, so you can select the date and you have the date dropping down. I'll just pick a random date in there. Now this option is, um, that's the date. This is the course. This is a multiple choice option. So in there you've got a, a list. I'll pick Excel. That's the list that I created earlier. And I've just added an extra column actually, so can people can add some comments in here I just need to widen that so that'd be like a bit of narrative um great course or whatever 
some other thing. You could have a list there with some options as well. So if you wanted to do some analysis and some feedback like that, it would be one of those uh, multiple choice uh, fields like this one. So I'll just add a few records. I'll just pause the video, add a few records, and then we can have a look at some of the different views that you've got. So now I've got a couple of people in here, or four people in here. You can see how this works. You've got edit in grid view. So across the right hand side, you've got the the options here to filter if I click on the filter icon you've got this filter so that's people that did Excel take that tick off and then you've got like a, a timeline there and that sort of thing I'll bring that back whether male or female in this case mr. or mrs obviously that's slightly um, old-fashioned nowadays then you can in, uh, click on an individual person or people and that will show you their their results or their comments now, if I close the filter, what you've got next to the filter funnel is this little drop down, which is showing it as a list. So this that says list. If I click on the compact list, you see how it just closes it up a little bit. And then you've got gallery as an option. Quite like the gallery view, to be honest. A bit more, stands out a bit more. And then you've got the options to create a new view, save a view, edit the current view. So if I put this back to list, so that's how it was. And then let's have a look at what we can do in there. If I go create a new view or edit current view. So I'll click on that. And then what it does, it opens a whole array of different fields that you can add. These are all the fields that are preset and the position that they're in. So you can change the position. I know I said you could drag and drop them, but you've got this option, all this sort of stuff down here that you can do. Any of these that you tick on, if I tick on attachments, that will appear on the list if I close if I click OK to this and then it will go back to the list and attachments as you can see there is at the end comment is quite wide I'll just bring that in a little bit but you now I've got attachments uh, I've not anything to attach just yet but that's an option there now at the top you've got edit and edit in grid view if i click on edit so i'm on the first let's go on the first record I click on edit all that does is open a pane on the right showing you all the details for that person you've got the add attachment field there look you could add something in for this person and save it i'm not going to do that i'm just going to cancel that off next to that you've got edit in grid view which is what i was using a minute ago so you can just see that shows it as a grid and you can click that off You've got export options where you can export to CSV, Excel or Power BI. And then you've got automate where you can send a reminder of date of course or set rules. Click on create rule and then you get these preset options. So what I'm going to do is a column value changes. I'm going to use this one. Click on that one. So it says choose a column. So I'll pick a column. So I'll say courses. Choose a condition, pick a condition, is, choose a value. Set to Excel, send emails to a name, well, send an email to me, like so. So that's it, create the rule. So the rule's created. And there's another rule I've already got, they're both on. Close this down, this window. And if I create a new person, um, you've got this new option at the top there. It just brings it up in this sort of view, so I'm not too key enough to be honest I'll just cancel that off so I tend to use this editing grid mode so new item so I'll go Mrs. Carol Manton she did a course on 31st and it was Excel so that Excel should trigger loved it and then to edit off that should trigger an email because there's been a change so somebody's done an excel course now another thing you can do in after rules is you've got a set reminder but you've got integrate and then you've got power apps power automate so you can create a flow from within lists so if i click on create flow again it's going to ask you to select an option or go into your flows which is power automate now the first option says send a customized email when a new SharePoint list item is added, which is basically what we're doing now, uh, email, but this is going to be through a flow, so an automatic flow, and then it just opens up. So it's opened up with the, the flow there, and then all your 
permissions need to be on otherwise this won't work and then you just click on create the flow and then it will create the flow so I'm not going to create that flow I'm just going to cancel this off come back to the list window so these options then you've got three ellipses at the end which you've got other options in there now each of these columns of as you can see has got drop down lists where you can sort by uh, A to Z, Z to A or filter and group by you've got a totals feature if it's got numbers if it's numeric none of these are numeric so this wouldn't apply now also on each line on each record you've got three ellipses as well where you've got a load of options we've got all this open the record so that'll just open it in that pane on the right there you could edit it that's the same as up there obviously share copy all of this sort of stuff and then uh, another way of setting a rule for a particular item versions and then more options at the bottom and then details for this so there's lots of different places where you've got information for this list and any time you can add extra columns and any times any time you want you can move columns around so that's all I want to talk about in this little video about how you can create a Microsoft list and add items and automate the list to SharePoint if you want or as an email reminder to yourself also that's all I want to talk about though in this little session thank you for your time I'll catch you on the next one